The scream of engines will replace the scream to play ball. It is our committee's um, charge or purpose to um, give a recommendation to the park board um, that would have the final decision on how the facility is to be used. The stadium committee considered two ideas, one by businessman Bob Parker to build a paved oval track to include periodic antique shows in flea markets. We end up with a, a circus fest type of environment and I, I think we can really attract the kids and the older citizens of that facility. A second proposal backed by Motor Speedway Chief Tony George won neighborhood support to build a dirt track. That includes programs to introduce inner city kids to the auto industry. But not just automobile racing, but really the aspects of the automotive world and the other areas. Indianapolis has made itself uh, kind of the center and hub of the automotive industry. All those in favor, let me know by raising your hands. The stadium committee gives the green light to the dirt track the proposal of Tony George. We're hoping to uh, be able to uh, benefit the city of Indianapolis benefit people involved and interested in racing and uh, kind of have a good time as we do it. Yeah. All I can do is wish them the best at this time and hope that they do offer the inner city what I plan to give them. The world on West 16th Street is changing. Players in cleats have given way to earth movers with clout. The pitcher's mound has disappeared in a mountain of topsoil. A level playing field yields to a packed clay racing surface. Players in baseball caps have moved on to make room for hard hats and eventually helmets. One of the men grooming this ground hopes to trade his earth-eating giant for a small ground-covering race car. That's the reason I'm out here mostly, because I want to see it built and maybe if I do get a drive on it one of these days I can say I built the thing, so <laughs> just want to be a part of it. Even though the dirt pile just started growing yesterday, there have been calls, people wanting to know, what are you going to do with the topsoil? The topsoil goes back inside. The man overseeing all this has an April date in mind, the 26th. That's when 20 engines will roar to life for the first time. But in order to build, you have to dig. And to build the track, we have to uh, get down 30 inches to put a base in, and, and that's what they're doing now. And we're moving the topsoil off the top right now. And we're going to dig down, and there's a clay material down here that's good for the bottom two-thirds of the track. Residents of the 200-plus homes north of the track vary in their opinions. Some welcome renewed life for the old stadium, engine noise and all. Others worry. It's going to be terrible. Really? Yes, because of the noise. It's going to be real bad. But the contractors continue to move heaven and earth in order to meet their deadline. On the west side, Linda Lupier, 6 News. It's all pretty simple. Three sixteenths of a mile of dirt inside turn three at the Indianapolis Motor Speedway. Meant to be a token of appreciation for Tony Stewart. Something to admire as he gets ready for his final NASCAR race at the Brickyard. This is a short track racer's dream to be able to come to Indianapolis and race at Indy. It may not be on the two and a half mile track, but you can come race here. I mean, that's, that's pretty cool for anybody. The thing is, Stewart's a racer and not one to generally sit back and just watch. Did that uh, wet your appetite a little bit there? Yeah, I got. I might have brought a uniform and a helmet with me today just in case I wanted to do something really stupid like this, so yeah. And just like that, Tony Stewart was climbing into a USAC midget car, not unlike he did when his career was brand new. And also just like that, it didn't take long for smoke to start slinging dirt. 
Stewart shared the small track with fellow Hoosiers Brian Clawson and Sarah Fisher. Both followed in Stewart's footsteps from dirt tracks to the Indy 500. He's kind of our guy. Um, you know, he was here the longest. He, you know, probably put in the most uh, most work at this level. And uh, you know, he's a guy that you can strap him in anything, and, and, and he can he can be competitive. The love of racing in general, and and the short track fans that we have are just so passionate. They just. Um, you know, it's it's just the enthusiasm. It's it's the sport itself. It's the competition. All of those combined. Stewart revved it up for just eight laps. Then he had to bring it in for the night. But clearly enjoying another taste of his roots in racing. His drivers are much smaller than I am. But um, yeah, I mean it's and it's been a long time since I drove with Keith Coons, so it was fun to do that in his car today too. But it, it is. It's I guarantee you it'll be fun to get back and do this more often. Tony might have more of this in his future. His NASCAR obligations will soon be behind him, and he'll have all sorts of time on his hands. At the Speedway, Brad Brown, RTV6. It started off two years ago as simply a fun idea. They put down some dirt, rolled a few midget cars around for a couple hours. Tony Stewart was there, Brian Clawson too. That magical night is about to become one of the marquee events on the USAC racing calendar. Seeing Brian run around here, uh, you know, when they first built a track uh, inside of it, seeing the pictures, um, you know, the it, it was really neat. Uh, and uh, I've, I knew that after that, he was really excited of, of the possibility of a, a track being in uh, side of Indianapolis Motor Speedway. Crews have begun assembling a quarter mile dirt oval inside turn three at IMS. 800 truckloads of clay being brought in. They'll eventually add safety barriers and fencing, even lights for night racing. We've been on a, on a rebound, working hard to bring our brand back. And really, this is one of the pinnacles to be back at the Indianapolis Motor Speedway to have our drivers be able to race here, it's a big deal. Work will soon start on grandstand seating for 5,000, maybe more. They're getting ready for midget racers from all over to come to Indy. It's kind of hard to put into words what it is because we, like, it's, we've talked about it now for a couple years now since they made the makeshift track out there, but um, we've, been, we've been on Doug, we've been on everybody here at IMS to, to do something like this because we know we can, we can make it great. I think it's good for IMS, I think it's going to be good for the Brickyard Week and certainly good for the USAC Midget Series, so uh, anything we can do to, to draw fans both ways and get to see this racing, we all know it's pretty exciting. Speedway President Doug Bowles seems extra excited for this one. How does that feel in there? And it, 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 you get in these and you realize how talented, the, the amount of horsepower, how small the car is, and, and the number of cars that they have in such a short, uh, short area. It just makes you realize how talented these USAC drivers are. And the race will serve as a tribute to Clawson. He had proven to be one of the very best at this racing discipline in a career that was cut short far too soon. You know, he was a short track grassroots race car driver at heart. That's that's who he was, what he did. When we came out and did it, it, it was really magical. It really, you know, it was uh, one of the, honestly, you know, we get to race a lot, and it was one of the best days ever spent at a racetrack. At the Speedway, Brad Brown, RTV6 Sports. What started as a dream of an idea just two years ago, came to reality tonight. 110 drivers from all over the country and several from outside the U.S. all here to honor the legacy of Brian Clawson. I was still racing sprint cars when he was just almost old enough to, to start racing images to sprint cars. So, uh, you know, I, you could see at a very young age that he was a true talent to our sport and we certainly uh, lost him way, way too early. You know, it's awesome to be a part of it. You know, we all wish he was here. Um, you know, he would have he would have loved to have been a part of it. But, uh, but you know, he definitely still is, and, you know, in, in a way. And, and uh, we're all glad to be here and be a part of it for him. After Wednesday's driver's meeting, Brian's father, Tim, personally thanked each driver. All were given a challenge coin meant to carry on Brian's memory. Everybody that's come alongside this event, um, you know, really has a passion for racing. And I think that's the biggest thing that you'll see um, the next few days in the dirt track community is just the passion for racing. Um, and it's been really cool to just kind of see the track progress. Driven to save lives is the organ donation cause that has come to the forefront after Brian's passing. Clawson himself was an organ donor. Dan Alexander was the recipient of Clawson's heart. Brian loved people and people love Brian. Yeah. 
He was a bridger. And by that, I mean he brought people together to make things happen. People who may not have a vision of what the future could be like, this, this whole event is, uh, is a vision. Fans turned out by the thousands. The racing action did not disappoint. As for this new patch of dirt inside the brickyard, it probably won't be the last race here. They did a great job, obviously, putting this racetrack here, and uh, it takes a lot of work, a lot of man hours to do that, and, and a lot of people. So uh, for Doug and everybody that uh, put a lot of effort in that, I, I think we all appreciate it. This is just the first half of the program here at the BC39. Tomorrow night, it's the qualifying races. At the end, the top 22 cars will race 39 laps for $15,000 more important a chance to be the inaugural winner here at the Brickyard. Inside the Indianapolis Motor Speedway, Brad Brown, RTV6 Sports.